Mara, the new Republic is still in desperate need As promised, the rest of the game is going to take place as uh, we follow the character of Mara Jade going on a couple of missions sent by the Republic. Uh, the, the expansion pack was originally called the Companion Mission Set, and the way that the game is kind of built around this uh, works out pretty cool compared to Jedi Knight. Whereas Jedi Knight was very much one story that kind of uh, went in its own direction, Mysteries of the Sith is more like four separate missions that each have their own pacing, their own development, uh, and their own variety within. So we have the first four levels as Kal Katarn in that kind of Protect the Rebel base mission, and now we're going to be playing as Mara Jade as she uh, makes some deals with some huts. Oh, Mara, you're so sassy. Well, that didn't go so well. I guess I'm gonna have to find a way to let myself in. Now, originally what I wanted to do here was, uh, actually, I downloaded the GOG versions of the game, uh, and I wanted to show the difference between the two, uh, because you can do 3D acceleration with the GOG version while you cannot do that here. Uh, where am I? Oh, there we go. Um, but unfortunately, try as I might, I could not get the GOG version of the game working with any kind of video capture software. Um, I, I really was hoping that it would kind of fix all of my problems that I was having with capturing this game already, uh, and the kind of choppiness of the menus, but as it is, the GOG version is probably even a little bit more choppy with the menus and going in and out of cutscenes and stuff like that. But the big value that it has is that you can display it in full screen, 1080p, uh, with the colored lighting effects. Now the colored lighting was actually a benefit of this, this engine over the JK engine originally. Um, and it looks beautiful, it adds a lot of atmosphere visually, and it's one of the reasons why the modding community focused on this game more for single player content, because it just it looked so much nicer and it made such a dramatic effect to the atmosphere of any kind of stage that you would be designing. But I just couldn't do it. I mean, I tried so hard to get it running. I used uh, four different capture softwares. It did not run on OBS, it did not work with Fraps, it did not work with D3D, it did not work with, well, whatever the fourth one was. Um, so unfortunately, I just I can't show it to you. I'm really sorry. I spent days working on this. I uh, I would have loved to show the side by side comparison of the, the colored lighting and the the GOG version compared to the Steam version, but uh, apparently not. Can't do it. Um, before I go on, I'm just going to say that we need to get through that door, but it's locked. So we're going to disrupt this machine, and a mechanic is going to come out to fix it, which I always thought was kind of a cool kind of. Um, I don't know, indirect logic way of getting past this puzzle. Whereas in Jedi Knight, it'd be more like, okay, we get to a locked door, we need to find a key to open the door, or I don't know, we come to a, uh, a force field, we need to turn off the force field. This is we come to a locked door, we need to disrupt something next to the door, and someone will come out to fix the door. Uh, I, I find it just an interesting kind of change to uh, the formula. But yeah, if, if we're deciding on which version of the game to get, whether the uh, GOG or the Steam. Definitely go for the GOG because um, you can do the, the full screen and it just it looks a lot nicer. Um, but if you already have the Steam version and are deciding whether or not the other one's worth it, I don't really think it's that necessary. I personally prefer running it in the window as I am right now. Oh, see, if we had killed this little uh, NPC here, he wouldn't have been able to open this door for us. Which, uh... Give us a bunch of things. Oh, that's not the best window space. Um, let's see, I believe we just need to go through here. So we're kind of crawling through these uh, slums. I don't know if this is supposed to be Tatooine or some other kind of crummy planet with huts. Ow! Oh, these thermal detonated guys are... Oh! Rather painful on me. I'm going to save. I'm taking pretty good damage here. Oh! So these Gamorrean guards are actually really tricky. I recommend switching to your lightsaber for them because they do a lot of uh, heavy physical damage and the uh, you, you don't even want to get, give them a chance to hit you. So I just go in with a double swing on the saber as soon as I can. We finally get our hands on a bow caster, which is really useful because it can kill most of these enemies in one hit and it's super accurate. Uh, it just doesn't have a very high firing rate, which is not very necessary when you're 
taking everything out so easily. Now, I wanted to say something about the pacing in this game. Uh, specifically, how kind of strange it is that they, uh, they break things up so much. I mean, we just went through a, a full four missions as Kyle, and, um, you know, we, we went through a lot of development. Like, we went through four levels of force powers already, and... Now we're back to square one. We're playing as Mara, and we kind of are, are starting over again. We have a limited arsenal. We have very limited force powers. I don't even have speed. I just have jump and seeing, I believe. Um, but this is another neat little puzzle here. And she's going to give us a hint to how to get through this. Come on. So while we were down that hole earlier, we picked up a item known as Tuscan Clothing. Uh, so you actually have to select it from your items menu, and this is what it looks like. We now are disguised as a Tuscan Raider. I guess something borrowed from the multiplayer system of, of different skins, but they actually integrated it into the main storyline, which is neat. It doesn't really ever happen again, unfortunately, but... Uh, oh, I want to run through here. If you wait too long, that door closes behind you, and you have to go around the really long way. It's annoying, so I always make sure that I, I bolt it through here. Um, get out of here. But yes, as I was saying about the pacing, so the first, the Jedi Knight game, uh, you, you kind of kept everything the same as you were going along. Every mission was kind of the same, other than the lightsaber battles, which were, of course, the, the highlight, the high point, um, and they were spread out very evenly. You had your first one in level 7, I believe, and then every few stages after that, and they were kind of like a, like a, a test of your skills, or little mini quizzes. Uh, and that's fine, but the, the downside of that is that you don't really get a test at the end. Uh, oh god, this is the worst. So, <laughs> this is the way we're supposed to go, but there's a secret down there that is really tricky to not die from, so I'm going to save beforehand, and I'm going to try to not get... Oh! Knocked off! Ah! This is what quick saving is for. Uh, oh, this is the worst secret to get in the game. I may have mentioned that the one in the second level was really bad, but I forgot about this one. Oh, okay. Not bad. Alright, so we're just going to grab ourselves a little bit of this, and now the even trickier part is getting back out there. Let me just save once more, because we need to force jump out. Okay. <laughs> See, this is why I would never attempt a, uh, a quick saveless run of this game. Oh, that actually went a lot smoother than I expected it to. Uh, but yes, so, meanwhile, this game has four of these little mini-missions, and each one has their own pacing. Um, so, here we're going to start off with a traditional level, but following this, we're going to do something, a very non-traditional stage, more of an exploration stage in the next episode, uh, followed by another traditional level, and then uh, one that changes up the pacing quite a bit again. You'll see what I mean when we get there. Um, and then the stages after that, of course, are also strangely paced, so to speak. Um, but there is no lightsaber combat focus, whereas Jedi Knight had uh, a lot of ways that you could kind of... Uh, make use of your lightsaber in combat. Uh, here we're just kind of fighting regular grunts. Wow, ah, apologies there, my phone went off. Uh, anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, so at the end of the game, uh, Mysteries of the Sith, it, there's a very big focus on lightsaber combat, and you'll see what I mean when I, we get there, of course. Um, but what it does is that you don't really have much use for training along the way. I mean, we're only fighting regular grunts. So it puts a very drastic spin to the gameplay when we get that far, and now have to switch pretty much exclusively to lightsaber combat. Um, so it, it's a very different approach to pacing, especially compared to Jedi Knight. Um, but I feel that it's effective to see these two games side by side, because of how different they are and how different they feel. Um, and each of these... Each of these little mini-missions, these uh, one of these four companion missions that the game is built around, has its own kind of development. So we're starting off with a very small arsenal as Mara, but we're going to get stronger and stronger as we go along, just like we started off with a very limited arsenal with Kyle, and then had a lot of fun uh, force powers by the end of his fourth mission. Uh, so we're actually going through a secret area here, the last secret area of the stage. Uh, and I'm doing a very poor job at health management, but that's okay. Now where's... where are my goodies? 
There they are. Hey, who needs health management when you're finding all these secrets and getting rewarded for it with a bunch of health? I didn't actually mention it before, but I, I really like that uh, area with the last secret where, uh, you know, the, the terrible secret that is a, a pain to get. Uh, in terms of world building, I like the idea that they would build these slums so close together with a, a cliffside in between a bunch of windows. Uh, just something about the Star Wars universe and, and how it, like, it seems feasible within this world, and I, I really like that in terms of world building. We're going through a slimy cantina right now, full of goons. Well, the AI could probably use a little bit of work. Uh, and there's a little bit of exploring to do around here, but I'm just gonna rush through to the end of it. Oh, uh, oh no! Yeah, you saw me take damage from those Gamorrean guards earlier. They are really no fun at all. Ow! Hey! Close the door. Gotta get him with a good double swing. Ah ha ha! Okay. So we're just gonna open the door here, run over. We're gonna grab ourselves a key. Come on. There it is. Now you'd eventually find out that you need to get this earlier anyway if you explored, but uh, I just kind of went straight for the key. I'll show you a little bit more of, uh, of non-exploring later in the stage. Uh, can we go this way? This way. It's a lot more open in design than Jedi Knight, I found. Uh, at least in some respects. Oh, another... Okay, wow, these guys really woke up in terms of their cruddy AI from before. Oh, I am doing terribly. I'm not gonna kill the bartender, he's just trying to do his job. And there's gonna be an ambush around the corner here. Aha! Didn't fool me. Uh, now here's another example of that kind of... Uh, second layer logic to getting through an area. So we need to get on the other side of this door. So you would think that we'd have to open up the door somehow, find the door controls, and then make our way through it. Um, but what happens after we enter this area is that the control panels are shot, so we cannot go out. This is a one-way door. Oh, whoops, I didn't realize there was another guard in here. So first things first, let's free some prisoners. Take that, Kapa the Hut, and make ourselves a little bit of a stairway up here. And this is going to take us to the, haha, <laughs> nice, to the door controls. So when we hit the button here, the door is going to open, but we can't get down there. This isn't a window that you can crawl through, and we can't go through that door that we came from. Uh, so how does this help us in any way? Well, if you go down this area here, you're going to find this kind of strange-looking pillar. Haha, <laughs> can't hide from me. And... It's just coming down here first, you wouldn't really know what this is, but since there aren't too many places to run, we can kind of figure it out eventually. Uh, so when we press down this button, that gate opens because this giant weight is being lowered. So what we need to do is ride the weight up. Again, it's an interesting little kind of uh, a roundabout way to get through an area. Instead of just looking for a way straight through the door, we go around the door by opening the door and take, using that to our advantage somehow. So now here's an example of when I said that uh, running straight towards the exit could be a little confusing. So the way to end the level is just right up here, as Mar will point out. And now the first few times that I played this stage, it was really confusing for me. I didn't really know what I was supposed to do. I thought maybe you had to lightsaber it, or, or there was some way in around here if you explore, but not quite. Um, what happens is that you have to actually explore around down here. Uh, I'm gonna... Trying not to get my butt kicked here. Oh! Pro Star. Pro Star. Okay, not so Pro Star anymore. Ow. Okay, so that funny looking thing on the table there, if you're, if you're not paying attention to the text prompt when you pick it up, you wouldn't know that those are heavy explosives. And that's what it is that we're looking for. Um, and since the, the first game, Jedi Knight, did not really make use of any items that were specifically programmed for missions, uh, it could probably take some people a while to realize that you're actually supposed to use these inventory items to complete parts of the mission. Uh, so that's what we're going to do now. Uh, here goes the end of the stage. We just got to place these explosives. Oh, God, the animation could be so much better. I don't see how she has any uh, <laughs> leveraged 
uh, power in this situation, but whatever. I guess this has all been a misunderstanding in all the goons that we killed earlier. He's just going to shrug that off. So this arc, this little mini-mission of Mara's, uh, revolves around doing this favor for Kapa the Hutt. And in the next stage, we're going to be hunting down Abron Mar, who is the lieutenant of Kapa's competitor. Um, and a very strange, uh, kind of open mission that could be completed very quickly. I'm still not sure if I want to do it in one video or two. Um, or, I mean, do the one stage in, as its own video or combine it with the next stage after that. Uh, but we'll see when we get there. Maybe I can spread it a little bit. But it's definitely nothing that, like we've seen in Jedi Knight beforehand. This is kind of unique to Mysteries of the Sith in terms of how they, they uh, pace the next stage and how they, they design it. But again, in terms of strange pacing, we're going from this very straightforward stage where we're kind of progressing from point A to point B to another one of those stages, kind of like the, the third stage with Kyle, where it's a bunch of small areas and you kind of have to decide or determine which order you're supposed to visit in them in, uh, in order to complete the stage correctly. So we found all the secrets, we'll get some stars. Uh, I'm going to definitely put some into Jump and speed, because everybody loves speed. I actually have a bunch of stars left over. Seeing's always very helpful, and I like using pull. Um, let's see, one into s jump or speed. Uh, it's tricky. I know there are some, some high jumps that I want to make later in the stage, so I'm going to put an extra point in jump. Uh, but that's it. Let's move on from here.